IGN is getting absolutely cooked for this post earlier today. People are quote retweeting them and memeing on them, talking about how bad the review is, and this review is on Jujutsu Kaisen Season 2, Part 2, or just Jujutsu Kaisen Season 2 in general, and basically... It's very clear just by the fan reaction, people are not very happy, and they're just memeing and laughing at IGN. So let's take a look at this review, and let's actually get to the bottom of this, if this is actually a good review, or a bad review, or if this is just people upset with the blunt honesty that someone didn't enjoy the arc as much as other people actually have enjoyed it. Now, let's be completely fair here. Let's clear the air and just be blunt, okay? Say whatever you want about JJK, like if you don't like it, whatever, you like it. JJK Part 2, Season 2 basically, you know, has definitely expanded the popularity of the series to a whole new level. In terms of meme culture to just discussion online, I think in the current period of time right now, JJK has never been as popular. It is the most popular it has ever been. I think, since its existence, because of just, like, the high-quality arcs with, like, Gojo versus, you know, Toji, to the stuff with the Shibuya arc, to the manga and all that, and the controversy all going on within that, and the discussion around it, memes, to just the animators and the crunch time and MAPPA overworking animators, there's just so much discussion around JJK. It is definitely at its peak popularity at this current time. And so anyone trying to say it is not popular is definitely lying. They're lying through their teeth. That 100%. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that it is a 10 out of 10 show, because things that are very popular doesn't necessarily mean that it is a masterpiece level quality, because there's many examples in the real world you can kind of draw the conclusion to. But anyways, I'm putting the cart before the horse. Let's talk about this review. So, here's the verdict before I kind of read the article. The Shibuya Incident arc seems jiu-jitsu, or sees Jujutsu Kaisen at its most action-packed, but the relentless bombardment of fight scenes ends up doing the characters, pacing, and story a disservice. If it's spectacle you seek, look no further than these episodes. If you want action to service the plot and characters rather than the way around, the other way around, this arc leaves a lot to be desired. Now, let's explain this. So basically what they're saying is, is they think that Shibuya is just nothing but fight, there's no character substance, there's no character development, no characterization, it's just literally an action fest. And, to be fair, there is a lot of action in Shibuya. There is, 100%. There is literal episodes just dedicated to fights. However, we also gotta think, and be fair here, this is a battle shonen. JJK is a shonen manga series that is a battle shonen. So, fights are to be expected. The core demographic for JJK is battle. Fights. That's true. Say whatever you want. That is true. It's like people saying they were wanting to get into Dragon Ball Z, and they're like, oh, I don't care about the fights. It's like, Dragon Ball is, yes, it has scenes that's not about fighting, but most of it is fighting. It's just, it's a battle show. That's just what it is. So, this little complaint is a little bit eerie, because it's like, oh, so you just don't like Shonen in general. That's kind of what it sounds like. But, okay, let's give some fairness here, and let's go up. So, overall, when you read this, they kind of talk about the crunch time of the studio, etc. Like, they mention how the studio is being overworked right here with the animators. They mention deleted posts and all of that. One thing that really started to pick at me, and I noticed, and this is what I completely disagreed with, with this review, was this segment right here, which I'm going to read. This is especially true once the body count starts to rise. Several characters die or get put out of commission by their injuries, possibly for the rest of the series, aka if you watch AJK Season 2, you know, Nobra, Nanami, etc. While a couple of these casualties are emotionally crushing and brought upon by character choices, some are used for shock value at best, and mere plot points at worst. It's not like there aren't stakes, just look at the giant hole where Shibuya used to be, or Gojo being imprisoned. Because the cast is separated at the beginning of the arc, we are t- we tend to only see some of them right before they die, making them seem like objects to be discarded rather than important, fleshed out characters. It is a shame because Jujutsu Kaisen was always better when focusing on its larger assembled, uh, assembled cast rather than Yuji himself. Seeing him mostly react to the villain's plot while his friends drop like flies makes Yuji a worse character and weakens the large assembled too. Likewise, having the villain get away from a fight right before losing time and time again 
quickly becomes annoying and tiresome. So that's a very long-winded thing to really basically say they just did not like Yuji having a lot of spotlight, and they think that deaths are mainly just for shock value. So, okay. There is an argument to be said about the deaths. I, I do think there is a very valid critique and criticism. Now, I'm not saying I agree with it, but I can see the point of view of why people would think, like, Nanami's death to Nobra's death is mainly there for shock value. At first glance, it's just, it seems like that, because it's a double whammy. It's, like, back-to-back, -back and, you know, after the whole Gojo thing, it's like characters are just dying like flies just for the sake of dying. That's what people could draw the conclusion to. So when you factor that in, it makes why it makes sense why someone would say that. It, it just it feels like they're being used as plot points or just for shot value, and I can see the complaint. However, there is way more going on with the characters than just a simple shot value mindset. There definitely is elements of that there. I don't think anyone can deny that. But this is where the whole review really just starts to break down. When they start talking about Yuji and say that they, you know, care more about Jujutsu Kaisen when it focuses on a larger cast. For instance, like Gojo, Toji, Nobra, you know, Nanami, all those different characters, basically. When it's focusing on a bunch of characters, you know, that's when the series shines. But when it focuses on Yuji, the series seems to kind of falter and dwindle. And this seems to echo the mindset that I talked about in my reviews for JJK, that people absolutely don't like Yuji. Now, like, people call Yuji not even a main character. They say he's not a main character with his story. People call him a loser. But that's exactly what his character is supposed to be. He's supposed to be a loser. His very point of his character is to basically be a tool or a vessel just to get rid of Sukuna. So his life is basically pain. And, you know, his objective of wanting people to have good deaths and have peaceful deaths, etc., you know, was shattered thanks to Mahito with killing Junpei. So when you think about all these things, Yuji as a character is definitely not someone you want to be. And it makes a lot of sense why people wouldn't really like him because you probably don't want to relate with him because it's just his very existence is sad. It's There's really not much hope within his character. So seeing that discussion, it's echoing those complaints I see from people. But what really gets me is when they say that there's really like a no character development. In fact, what happened with Nobra or Nanami made his character much worse and weakens the larger cast as well. I think that this right here just goes to show whoever watched this was not paying attention. I, I, I think, honestly, when I see this, I just, it makes me believe that they looked at Cliff Notes, so like, probably people either on TikTok or on Twitter or YouTube, and their thoughts on certain death scenes and all that, and then they piece this review together from those little Cliff Notes that they got from people's reactions. Because when I see this overall statement, it makes me believe that they actually have not watched the series. Because anyone that is not memeing or trolling and actually has a good, eye, like, a, a above or even a average level IQ can understand that Yuji actually developed as a character. Like, the whole point of Mahito was to be the antagonist to Yuji and ripping him apart. So, when you see how he's constantly mentioning, like, oh, we are the same and all that, you know, I kill a bunch of humans, I don't bat an eye, you kill a bunch of curses, you don't bat an eye, and they start talking about that Mahito's just trying to really rip apart Yuji and just make him miserable and take away his innocence, you know, at the end of Season 2, that pretty much happens. Yuji admits to Mahito, like, I am you. I'm going to kill you over and over and over again, no matter what, because I will kill curses. And he's like, that's just my job. And it fundamentally breaks him down as a person and makes him just legitimately depressing. It's very sad to see just such a broken character. And so seeing someone say it makes him a worse character... I understand if you don't like him. Like, if you don't like Yuji, that is completely fine. I understand why people wouldn't like Yuji because he is a loser. But yeah, it's the truth. But saying he's a bad character, I think, is a little bit of a stretch when literally the whole point of a lot of those deaths and the whole sequence of Shibuya was literally leading to Yuji's development, showing that he's just not strong enough to save anyone. People are just dying around him, and the world is absolutely miserable in JJK. So yeah, just... Two cents, I don't think the reviewer of this watched the show. If they did watch the show, they really did not care too much about Yuji, which I felt led to a lot of bias into the way this was written. 
That's my two cents on the matter. Now, with all that said, though, basically, they talk about there's just so much combat and barely any breathing room. And that's what really catches me by surprise, because this goes back to the statement with Yuji, is that there's many scenes, especially with Yuji, that focuses on not just fights, but just his emotional state in dealing with it and all that. And so, the fact that you have this just too much combat but no breathing room, it's like, I understand you don't always need action, but there was definitely scenes with no action as well. So, I don't know, kind of, kind of a weird statement going on here but uh yeah ign back at it again with uh another review that is getting cooked by the internet and it makes a lot of sense honestly because uh i don't agree with the full extent of the review i do think that yes there is some deaths that maybe could have been done better but i think that saying that they were just for shock value is arguable you can argue against that but uh, I want to leave it at that. Just wanted to talk about this. Thank you so much for watching. May you have a fantastic day or night wherever you live. Be safe. Stay healthy. Chibi out.